Although no Civil War battles took place in Illinois, the war had a direct and profound impact on Lake County residents. Local men and boys volunteered to fight, while their families were left to manage without them. The following video from the Dunn Museum gives a glimpse into what life was like for those on the home front. The families that were left at home worried about a lot of things. One of the things that you find when you read their letters is that mothers in particular were worried that their sons would be changed by the war. They had most of the time had never been out of their communities. They were used to a very small group of people and now they were going out into a vast world with a lot of people that they didn't know. And you'll read numerous letters where mothers are warning their sons not to associate with men of ill repute, not to gamble, not to play cards, don't touch dice. They of course were worried that that the person, that their loved one would would die during the war, as anyone is who goes to war today. However, they were equally worried about honor. To them, it was far more, it was just as important that their husband or their son go and honor their duty to their country and behave honorably as a man. Aid societies started in many different ways. A lot of the aid society organization came out of church societies that already existed, missionary societies. A lot of it started out as just hometown. The men are going off, they need blankets. Let's have, let's go out and let's get all the blankets that we can from everybody and we'll give them to the men. They would have sauerkraut parties. They would collect cabbages by the barrel. They would make barrel upon barrel of sauerkraut. And it wasn't just because people liked sauerkraut or because as we would think today, because they were German or they wanted lots of brats. It was because sauerkraut has a lot of vitamin C and it helps prevent scurvy and it lasts much better than limes or lemons do. They knit socks, they knit socks incessantly. It's one of the few times that knitting in church was allowed. What gave people at home hope was a large part was letters from their soldiers. People depended so greatly on those because there wasn't a lot of other way to communicate with their soldiers. And of course those letters could be greatly delayed and so you would wait desperately. They would often say, it looks like we're going to be moving soon. Of course, they didn't know where they were going themselves. They would often complain about their officers. They would complain about camp life. They might write, it's interesting, they would often write news of somebody else from the community. They might say, oh, and this happened to Jeb, or Jeb hasn't heard anything from his wife for a while. Could you see if everything was all right? The other thing that gave people hope was faith. It was an extremely faith based society. Today we, can't, we focus so much on separation of church and state that we forget how much people's faith informed their daily lives. People who aren't any different than they are today. We think that because they lived 150 years ago, they were really strange and different. And they're people just the way, just like you and I, and they have the same loves and the same fears and the same passions. 